The hype train is a fantastic creature, roaming gallantly in the wild, all carefree and full of the type of positivity that the NHS Sexual Health Centre in Gateshead is absolutely rife with. And you know what? Deep down, we love it, because it reminds us that life is meant to be enjoyed. It's okay to be excited, it's okay to look to the future with childlike wonder and hope. Except, well, more often than not, games which at one time might have looked more attractive than a night of climbing the tree with a pal, if you know what I mean, ends up being about as inviting as an all-you-can-eat rusty nail buffet. In this world of day one patches, there shouldn't be this sort of catastrophic launch, but it still does exist. Boy, howdy does it exist. And it serves as an example of how the hype train can become derailed very quickly upon launch. With this in mind, I'm JulesWhatCulture.com, and these are eight promising video games that totally botched their launch. Launch. Number 8. Star Wars Battlefront 2 Kicking off this list, and in an effort to show that not all of our lists are focused on this force faffer, is Battlefront 2. It should have been so easy, it should have been so good. EA was in a rare position of being able to deliver what the fans wanted with a story mode, more content and free DLC down the line, but they fudged it the moment the loot box system appeared in the beta. Iconic characters like Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader were locked away behind enormous grinds, cosmetic options were randomised, and there was a whole iffy sense that if you had a big wallet, you could dominate the Death Star and beyond. Even Disney got on the phone and told them it was too much, and as the media whipped this tale into a frenzy, calling it gambling and harmful to children, Battlefront 2 watched it all burn around them, hoping just to survive the launch. It has, and is on the men to some degree, yet this sort of spin really won't be forgotten anytime soon by the gaming public. Number 7. Diablo 3 Despite masterminding one of the biggest online games of all time, World of Warcraft, nothing could have prepared Blizzard for the disaster that was Diablo 3's launch. For a long time, absolutely no one could play the f***ing game. The majority of players were met with this now infamous Error 37 message, informing them that the servers were too busy, while those that had managed to get into the game were met with something more bogged up than the toilets here at What Culture Towers. <sighs> Unfortunately, due to Diablo 3's always online connectivity requirements, even the single player aspect of the game was locked off. It's almost hard to believe that Blizzard messed up so badly. It's almost like they didn't realise that the sequel to one of the most beloved games of all time would be played by more than 10 people at a go. And the less said about the auction house, the better. Oh well, at least Overwatch launched pretty smoothly, so I guess they've learned their lessons. Number 6. Batman Arkham Knight Batman Arkham Knight, the third in Rocksteady's critically acclaimed trilogy, launched absolutely fine. In fact, it went off without a hitch- oh, oh wait, sorry, you're, you're talking about the PC version, aren't you? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Or, as Warner Brothers calls it, f you. Arkham Knight for the PC was like my life. Unfinished, messy, and left a lot of people watching it angry. The game suffered from a litany of problems on the PC. For starters, it was capped at 30 frames per second, yet the game often stuttered and dropped frames whenever Batman would enter the Batmobile. Alongside frame issues, the game was plagued by texture problems. Everything from enemies to environments featured low resolution textures which failed to load into detail upon the character approaching them. Then the crashes. Oh, lordy, the crashes. It was enough for Steam's then newly integrated refund system to get an absolute workout. And what did Warner Brothers do? Well, they just raised their hands and said, we didn't make the PC version, and then they left, never to truly iron out the damage they'd done. Number 5. SimCity Always online is just such a bad idea, isn't it? If anyone argues otherwise, then just show them the launch of SimCity in 2013. It was an unmitigated disaster and forced EA to go in and disable features just to get the title running at a basic level. They even tried to win people back by offering a free game to anyone who was affected by its terrible start, yet the damage was done and it was eviscerated by critics and YouTubers like ourselves alike, with many pointing out the one huge, monolithic issue with it. This was mainly a single-player game, so why the f*** did it need to be constantly online so badly? It was a big blow for EA, especially seeing as this was one of their first outings since being voted worst company in America. The old one-two punch, eh? Number 4. No Man's Sky the disappointment of No Man's Sky is well documented by now, but before the game was released, anticipation was still at an all-time high. Players couldn't wait to experience the supposedly revolutionary game that would allow them to visit thousands of unique and interesting planets, interact with different species, and simply live whatever spacefaring life they wanted. The launch of No Man's Sky, however, revealed the truth about the game. Disappointing on all fronts, No Man's Sky was a tedious, resource-gathering game with a heavy emphasis on survival. Rather than being about boundless exploration, it was 
restrictive, with player freedom curtailed at every turn. The anger escalated, however. The No Man's Sky subreddit was full of accusations of lying aimed at the developer Hello Games, and the situation got so bad that the subreddit was temporarily shut down. Add to this fire the fact that Hello Games went silent for months after release, and people began to suspect that they had taken off and run away with the money. It was one of 2016's biggest gaming controversies, but Hello Games have since turned it around, releasing numerous patches to help improve their embattled game. Number 3. Battlefield 4 these days, if you hear people talk about Battlefield 4, it's generally very positive. The game has retained a fan base, and its massive 64-player battles continue to be populated. It didn't start out this way, though. Battlefield 4's launch was incredibly rocky, highlighting some of the issues caused by developing for a brand new console on a constrained timescale. With crashes, freezes, and more disconnecting than my dad is with his feelings. It got so bad that DICE postponed all development work on future content so they could actually fix the base game, but that's a weird thing to make a big deal about because surely that should be the case regardless of your DLC plans. Fix your game or f your name should be the new saying, am I right lads? Number 2. Assassin's Creed Unity one of the most famous and lambasted video game launches of this generation has to go to Assassin's Creed Unity. One of the most anticipated Assassin's Creed games of recent years, Unity promised a lot and boasted that new console hardware would push the limits of what AC could do as a franchise. And if by that they meant that we'd have to see these horrific nightmare faces, then yes, AC really did a lot for launch. Characters falling through floors and connections being lost all the time. Ubisoft's shares dropped after a number of controversies surrounding the game's launch, including including the company pushing the review embargo up until after the game's release. After the bungled launch, Ubisoft stated that moving forward it will provide early access to some of its games in an effort to avoid a situation like Unity's again. And number one, Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, it had to be this one, right? When you've got something as popular as Final Fantasy and a botch launch so bad that you have to reboot the entire world, then you know you're looking at the stuff of internet legends. Going in with a white-hot hype train, Final Fantasy XIV looks set to wow the world with its MMORPG style. Yet the version that was launched was about as finished as this sent. Aside from some pretty nice graphics, the game looked like a mule and handled about as well. So in the face of mounting descent from fans, Square Enix looked at the code, nodded its head, stroked its beard and said, f*** it, we'll do it again. So Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn was released, and to be honest, that game is good. Oh, it's so good. It's, and to be honest, that game is good. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.